So there's a concept that I just heard in a video like less than five minutes ago. And the guy said, you don't see things as they are. You see things as you are, which means if you're messed up, everything you're looking at is messed up. You know what I mean? Because you'll, you'll see what you are in the things that you're criticizing. You know what I mean? Like, like if the, if the lens, if the lens that you're looking through is dirty, let's say you're wearing glasses and it's filled with mud, everything you're, lo you're looking at becomes muddy. You know what I mean? Because you're, the lens that you're looking through, you, you never clean them, you know? And if you don't, if you don't purify the way you look at things, then nothing is pure. And maybe that's why there's a scripture in the Bible that says to the pure hearted, everything is pure, you know? Um, to the pure hearted person, everything is pure. So as you look at things, what's up, uh, SK? Um, <clears throat> so yeah, man, um, there's something, there's something very liber liberating about being able to see. And I think this is available to everybody, by the way, everything that I've ever talked about in podcasts, inner peace, mental health, like getting your head screwed on straight, that's available to every person. Like people don't have to be out of their minds. They don't have to be crazy. They don't have to, you know what I mean? They don't have to have anxiety, depression, um, but you know, some people are going to tell themselves that that's how it has to be. And thus that's how it has to be. Cause that's what they communicate to themselves. And then the life that they live is a product of the thoughts that they have on a daily basis. You know what I mean? So, um, the way I used to see people, it was only for face value, you know? Um, because that's, that's how we're, we're indoctrinated to look at things for face value. So if it's, you know, I'll, you know, call a spade a spade, you know, like we use that terminology to talk about um people you know but the thing is like everybody could transform anybody could transform and become a higher version of self and become more than what they are that we would in a moment want to criticize you know what i mean uh what's up scott what's going on so um yeah man um so i just i thank god that like you know i've always asked him like yo teach me how to see people the way that you do because you're not in heaven frustrated by people you're not complaining all the time. You're not bothered by people. You love people, you know, and if I love people the way you love people, I won't be frustrated by them anymore. You know, there's a lot of pride, a lot of offense. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, like I, I realize as I'm as I'm changing my view and, and you know, I, I'm looking at things from a whole different lens. So now what I'm looking at looks different to me because it's under a different scope. You know what I mean? Like. When I used to get offended, it was because people said things I believe they shouldn't be saying. I changed that belief system, you know what I mean? And now I view it from a different lens. Now I feel like if I believe in freedom of speech, right? And if I believe that I have the right to say, think, and feel what I want, who the hell am I to say that you don't have the same right? You know what I mean? So I started really embracing what people have to say. And I spent less time saying, well, you don't have the right to feel that way. You don't have the right to say that. You know what I mean? It's selfish of me to even say that, you know what I mean? Because then I'm going to have a mindset where I put other human beings in manipulative situations as if they're alive to serve me. I don't believe none of you listening to this. You don't owe me anything, right? You don't owe me your time. You don't owe me your courtesy. You don't have to be kind to me. You don't. These are very extreme views. Like, you know, some of you are going to hear this and be like, what the hell? Like common courtesy. Isn't that to be expected? Isn't that a normal expectation? You know, I guess. I guess it's normal until you don't get what you think you deserve from people. And then the devil comes out of you. And then what comes out of you as a product of you not getting what you want, that is not normal. You know what I'm saying? Like, because then you live a destructive life and then everyone controls your mood and then everybody. And then you being upset is always somebody else's fault. You know what I mean? Most people are one people, but in a way from self-destruction. You know what I mean? A lot of people be, and they can't control their emotions. And worst part is a lot of them think they were born that way. You know what I mean? So give me a second. I got to charge my phone. It's going to be a short podcast. Cheesy, popo, popular. What's going on, Brandon? How you doing, man? What's up? What's up, Michael? So, yeah, man. So as you as you train your mind to look at things differently, your interpretation changes. And if your interpretation changes, your perspective is going to change. As your perspective changes, the emotions that are linked to whatever perspective you currently have changes. You know what I mean? So... Um, yeah, so some of, some people are always frustrated by people is because of their view on life and you'll never, those people that are always frustrated, they, they'd be like, oh, well, you know, if you act this way, that's how I'm going to treat you. I'm going to treat you exactly the way you act. And, um, justice rules their life, you know, like they govern, they navigate through the world 
by serving justice to other people and giving people exactly what they think they deserve. You know what I mean? And it's only justice. It's no grace. It's not tempered with grace. It's like, whatever you give me, I'm going to reciprocate that. You know what I mean? So that's why I've learned, like, if I don't want to receive negative energy, I have to not be negative. Even when someone's being negative to me, I return that with positive energy. Why? Because people are reciprocal. You know what I mean? I I've had, I've had times where I join a chat room and someone curses me out randomly, right? And I don't return that energy to them. Why? Because I don't feel like receiving that. And I don't feel like it's a good, good use of my time to reciprocate negative energy. It's not a good use of their time to receive it. It's not a good use of my time to distribute it. So therefore, it's like, why even engage in that type of way? So I try to exemplify what I think other people should be. I try to be a walking example of what I think people should be. And I spend less time telling people, hey, you should do this way. You should do this. And I, sp I try to spend more time living the life that I think others should live without voicing that directly, without saying, hey, I think people should be like this. You know what I mean? Because it's super ineffective to be something that someone else doesn't admire and then try to like mandate that someone lives life according to your standard when the people you're talking to don't even respect your opinion. You know what I mean? So anyways, this is going to be a super short podcast. It was just, it was on my mind and I wanted to get this out. Um, you know, cause like I might've forgot to do this podcast. So yeah, man, when you change the way you think it changes your life, man. So anyone listen, who's easily offended, always upset, always angry. It doesn't have to be that way. You know what I mean? Like, I say this a lot in podcasts. There's a book written on a subject that you struggle with. There's a video dedicated. There's a series of videos dedicated. You know, you literally don't have to struggle. And us being in the information age where information is so readily available, whatever you're struggling with, man, if your marriage is falling apart, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you keep searching for answers, you know what I mean? Keep watching videos on a subject matter. Keep talking to people. Keep being curious. You know what I mean? Like, don't come to the conclusion that, because life has been a certain way for six years, that it has to continue being that way. Because that's the mindset that makes the last six years, you know, it makes the next six years just like the last six years. And then it's just a cycle that constantly repeats itself. And then you're stuck because you think it has to be that way. Because you sold yourself a bag of shit belief system that disempowers you from ever being able to change because you don't believe change is possible. You know what I mean? Or maybe you complain about how hard it's going to be to change. Anything that's worth something, it's going to be hard. You know what I mean? Like people want easy, but easy doesn't get you to what you really want. You know, delayed gratification is better than instant gratification. Why? Because, you know, when you, when you work up to something and then you finally achieve it, it means that much more to you when you get it. You know what I mean? Um, when I'm talking to other men, I say this about like, you know, women, like what is a woman worth to you if you sleep with her today and you met her 35 minutes ago? You know what I mean? Does Is she going to have any worth to you tomorrow? You know what I mean? But if it's been five years and she doesn't, you know, a lot of things that you used to get exploit other women for, she's not letting you do that to her. Why? Because she has a mindset that wouldn't let her tolerate that. You know what I mean? Living that type of life. You know, and then she stands out to you as different from the rest who would just lay in bed with you first day of meeting you or three days after meeting you. You know what I mean? Everyone wants easy, not realizing the value of something easy. It's not a high value. You know what I mean? Like when I play video games and I put it on very easy, it's boring as hell. There's no challenge to that. You know, I put shit on very hard. Why? Because I know that it's going to be like that much more fun to play when I past the final boss and it's on very hard it's that much more gratifying to me to pass the level or to even return and try to do it again and challenge myself again with you know um so yeah man anyways uh so yeah i really like that quote that i just heard 20 minutes ago where the guy's like you don't see things as they are you see them as you are and if you're twisted everything you look at is twisted because you're twisted you know what i mean if you don't if you're wearing glasses and they're muddy Everything you look at through those lens is muddy and defiled and messed up because your lens is dirty. And if you don't clean your lens, everything you look at is going to be messed up. You know what I mean? Until you take them and wipe them off, man. And the best way to view people is for what they could be, knowing that they have ridiculous potential that's unlocked. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still locked. They don't even, they might not even know it's there half the time. There's a lot of mediocre people that they have greatness waiting inside of them to be unlocked. But they don't know that because they choose a life of mediocrity for whatever reason. You know what I mean? And I feel like 
you know, some, some of you get mad at people who are mediocre, who have so much potential, you know, the reason I don't get mad at these people, I have a different perspective. I feel like you have the right to be as mediocre as you want to be. You have the right to never unlock your destiny. You have a, a, the right to live a subpar lifestyle that is way beneath your potential. You know what I mean? And I, I feel like that's not my place to be mad at you for that because you have the free will, man. Free will, like you can navigate through life however you choose. And whatever the consequences of those decisions are, you must bear it by yourself. You know, I'm not going to bear it with you, you know? So I don't know, man. I just refuse to like lose sleep at night over somebody else's decisions. I care about people. Of course, I, I love everybody, but it's just not my place to have an opinion about your life decision. You know what I mean? Um, because in that place, if I am constantly agitated by you and what you choose to do with your life, my agitation is going to reflect in my tonality when I speak to you. And when I speak to you in a condescending matter, I'll never be able to reach you because I'm spending my time judging you instead of lifting you up to what you could be. And I'll never judge you if I see you for what you could be, because then I'll never take you as face value. So you see, like, so now my view on people, it changes my emotional response and changes everything about my life. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, you don't see things as they are. You see things as you are. So if you change how you are, it, that by itself changes how you see everything else. Um, that's, this is why I tagged them. Oh, yeah, you can feel free to tag anybody. I appreciate you uh, tagging people. Uh, I pray to God that I'm bringing some type of value to you guys. Thank you so much for everyone who's listening. Um, I do a lot of podcasts on these subjects, on these topics. You could go back on my timeline if you want to. And I hope something that I said helps you, man. Um probably be here a couple more minutes and then i'm pretty much done I'm trying to think if i got anything else to say nah so yeah i'm just i'm celebrating being free man i'm celebrating not living in bondage and i'm i'm celebrating like thank god that i believe that's possible and i'm trying to spread that message to other people you don't your your mind you know it doesn't have to be mental torture on a daily basis your thoughts don't have to torture you if you get rid of the thoughts that are killing you you know what i mean but if you hold on to mediocrity then you're, you're holding on to the same emotions the same reactions life is a constant cycle why because your view never changes and if your view never changes the way that you see things never change because you're probably viewing things from a dirty lens you know what i mean so those of you that are altruistic you want to change the world the best way to change the world that i've been learning over the last month or two is to change yourself when you change the world within yourself it will change everything else you know what i mean and when you when you spend your time being all that you could be and instead of trying to mandate mandate it that someone live up to their uh, potential you know what i mean because like i don't spend my time telling people what they should be doing what ought not to be what's not right this is wrong this is right because look when jesus came here to this world if he came here right we'd all be wrong but thank god that he came righteous what's the difference he, you know he kept he making wrong things right making wrong things right he didn't focus on how messed up people are and they shouldn't be there be that way focused on a solution you know what i mean if god was in heaven complaining and always offended he'd, he'd have never sent his son to die for the world so why is he able to send his son because he's not offended because love doesn't take an account of a suffered wrong you know what i mean otherwise god would be in heaven like look at these damn people man i do this for them i wake them up in the morning they don't pray to me before they pray to me they or if they choose to pray to me they check their Twitter feed first. They check their Instagram first. They check their Facebook first. Like I should be number one. I should be this in their life. They should view me like this because if they don't, I'm going to stop blessing them. I'm going to stop. Yo, if God sounded like that, he would sound insecure as hell. He would sound like he created humans because he desperately needs a friend and he's a mental basket case. Unless you're fulfilling his expectations on you, he's emotionally unstable. This world would be scary if God thought like that. Thank God that God's not insecure because if he was, that'd be a problem for me and everyone else. And me five years ago, six years ago, when I was living in my mediocrity, there'd be no hope for people like me to become who I am now as you hear me on this podcast because I was negative as hell, man. If you want to see, take a glimpse of who I was, scroll back on my timeline, five years, six years, you'll see a version of me that's not what I am today. And it's because my mindset changed, you know, because when a mindset changes and when a justification that enables a mindset to continue, when a justification dies, the behavior changes. You know what I mean? Like, I think I said this in yesterday's podcast. If there's a guy who beats his woman, right? And he says, well, I would have never gave the girl a black eye if she would have never said these words to me. 
he has a justification for beating women. So, which means the behavior is going to continue. Why? Because the justification has not yet died that makes his actions permissible. If you wonder what the hell makes people the way they are, they have a mindset that makes their actions permissible. That's what makes everybody the way that they are. So what makes one, one man different from the other is his philosophy. And nothing destroys a man quicker than his destructive philosophy and the way he thinks. Because if you think wrong, you live wrong. And if you live wrong, you'll feel wrong. And if you feel wrong, man, you'll treat everyone wrong and then everything's wrong. You know what I mean? Because, you you know, it's just, it's a product. Life is a product of how you think. You know, it's amazing how one man has a zero, zero bank account balance. And he's depressed as hell about that. Another man has a zero bank account balance. And it doesn't bother him as much, you know? And both of them know that they have ridiculous potential. But what's the difference between the two? One man believes that one day his bank account's going to have a lot of money in it. And the other man is taking life personally and getting discouraged because he's not as far as he thinks he could be and he much he should be much further along in his in his mind and it's holding him he's holding himself so accountable for what life hasn't how how life hasn't turned out the way he think it should holding himself so accountable to that standard that he can't move forward because he's condemning himself on a daily basis for what he if he would only take that same time that he spends condemning himself and formulating a plan for the future He'd be less, con he'd feel less condemned because he'd spend less of his time condemning himself and he'd feel better about himself chasing something that he wants to accomplish, something he wants to fulfill. You know what I mean? So th there's, you know, there's two men in this world with the same exact circumstances, yet one feels like he's living in hell and one is feels like he's in heaven regardless of circumstance. Why? Because while a storm is going on around one man, just because there's a storm formulating around your life, there is no storm within your own heart. And you're not falling apart internally, even though everything is falling apart externally, because you're not you're not a product of circumstance because circumstance isn't determining your life. Why? Because your personality is rooted in something much stronger than circumstances not being ideal. And that makes you powerful. Nothing could upset you. Nothing could bother you. Yo, like everything I'm talking about is available to every human being. What's the difference between people that are, is going to uh, obtain what I'm talking about and the ones that don't? Some people have faith and some don't. And that's the that's the major difference between those that achieve and those that don't. You know what I mean? Everyone that goes to heaven, they had faith. Everyone that doesn't, they probably didn't believe heaven was for them or it was too damn hard to get there or it's too many rules to follow or I'm not good enough or I'm this or you know what I mean? Like there's there's a lot more people that could have made it than the amount of people that are going to make it. But the difference is they, they talk themselves out of heaven. You know what I mean? And in this world, maybe they talk themselves out of success. They talk themselves out of being a YouTuber, a Twitch streamer. They talk themselves out of, you know, uh, investing their money into that nail salon that they always wanted to purchase. But their pessimistic neighbors and friends always said, hey, what if you fail? What if this? What if you put $100,000 in, into buying land and setting up shop and you have no customers and then this happens? Shouldn't you invest your money this way and shouldn't you do that? And then a person spends all their life listening to other people, listening to everybody else instead of their own intuition, their own heart that tells them, you know, what they want to do, what they want to take a risk on. Because something that's much more scarier than failure is regret, is to be 85 and to say, damn, I'll never know what could have happened if only I would have took a risk, if only I would have tried, you know, you don't know what's on the other side of trying. It could have been massive success. And now you're going to blame your pessimistic neighbors and family members for them being the reason why you couldn't believe in yourself. And I'm telling you, believing in yourself is possible outside of who believes in you. It doesn't fucking matter if no one believes in you. The only person you need to believe in you is you. God already believes in you. You know what I mean? God already believes that ridiculous things are possible for you. It's up to you to believe that, you know, so don't get discouraged when people don't support you. A lot of the people that fail to support you, they barely support their damn self. They barely have a dream for themselves. So how can you expect them to have a dream for you? You know why I think making $5,000 a week from your smartphone is possible for you and quitting your job is possible for you? I believe it for you because I believe it for me. So if I believe it for me, of course, I'll believe that for you. Anybody who's cynical towards your dream, they're probably cynical towards themselves. So don't take them personal. You know what I mean? They need to they need you to not be offended by their lack of perspective. They need you to be solidified in something solid that doesn't fall apart just because people don't believe in you. You know what I mean? And for you to be so damn positive that it doesn't matter what they don't believe or what they do believe because it doesn't hold any weight 
in terms of where you want to be in life and where you yourself know you're capable of reaching. So anyways, with that being said, man, I love you guys very much and see you on the next podcast, man. I hope, uh, I hope this added value to your life. Take care, man.